Well, I was born on the reserve, actually, in uh, Ermanskin Reserve. The village used to be called Hobima. It's now called uh, Musquachis, which is the traditional the name. So I was brought up by a traditional upbringing with my grandfather, and then an encouragement for education from my grandmother uh, between the two of them. So I was taken to residential school at a very young age. I didn't know English uh, because I was raised Cree. Growing up in that kind of an environment, away from my parents, away from my grandparents, uh, along with other children in an environment supposedly for learning, uh, was a difficult thing. But for me, I found a savior. I always say I found something that I liked, um, and it was sports. I would run away from the abuse through sport. The good story is that I found a way out. I found sports. I liked participating. I noticed it helped my schooling. So I just, it was a good mix for me. So I continued and I eventually went to university. Uh, I played hockey at the university. I was on a swim team at the university. This com combination of sport and academics helped me get through law school to the point where I was the first Alberta Treaty Indian to graduate from law school. I didn't know that either. And then subsequently to get elected to parliament. Uh, all of these, what are some call success, achievements, all relate back to the sports. For me, that's what, that was the common thread. I remember one coach in particular um, because of a message he gave us all. Uh, I remember him and I think he was uh, very influential in my life. And he said to us, uh, quitters don't win and winners don't quit. That stuck to me. In, in the, this was maybe, I would say grade nine or 10. And that stuck to me till today. I played baseball in three countries. I was blessed to play hockey in nine different countries. I swam in three different countries. Baseball I liked, hockey I liked, but I broke my legs. So in order for therapy, I started swimming. <laughs> and swimming led to, uh, as part of therapy, uh, also some, some success. Uh, uh, but all along I thought it was, I needed to practice what I preach. Because I was taught, you know, I would go to graduations and I'd talk to children, I'd talk to you. And I'd always encourage them to, to pursue a balance between the physical and the spiritual and the mental. Uh, you know, study hard and play hard. And but had we had more sports, even today, if we had more sports today, I think things would change faster. Because sport is a happy medium. It's a happy medium to work with, with difficult situations. Uh, and that's why places like this, like the Sports Hall of Fame that, 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 uh, that generates uh, good stories. These are good, successful, motivating stories. But each, behind each one of them, I'm sure was also a difficult journey. They weren't all, all easy, easy street, right? Uh, but they're motivating. And that's the power of sport to heal. A, a brother of mine, um, we're sitting down one time and we were lamenting in a sense that we were losing our young people. We were just using, losing too many of our young people. And we thought both him and I were former athletes. And we said, why can't we do something with sport to help our young, young people? And we said, well, what can we do? Well, let's start. Let's start with summer games. I said, let's have summer games. We'll invite all the reserves, kids. And we did that in, in 71. I had 13 different sports. All the reserves came together with their youth and, and had a celebration, both of um, sport and culture. We, we included our cultural um, element into the sport uh, participation. And then that grew like into a winter games, from Alberta games, summer and winter, then to Western Canada. 
Winter Games. And then I went to Sweden in 1977 and I, I proposed a resolution that we should, we should have a World Indigenous Games. Let's try and lift up our culture and our games in a good way so that we can motivate our young people to, first of all, begin to know themselves again, who they are. And we thought, for me especially, because of what sport gave me, I wanted to give it back to others, uh, you know, the benefits of sport for me. And in 77, when I suggested the World Games, uh, <laughs> it was a very long shot because it, it, it requires a lot of money to do something like that. It took me 38 years actually to actually live, to realize the dream of having a World Indigenous Games. It took 38 years. But that was what was behind it all. What can we do for our youth so that they will choose life and have a healthy lifestyle? And sport and traditional games were the answer. A formula for success is balance. By that I mean to, success, to succeed in life, it doesn't matter what aspect of life, pursuit of life, if you balance your physical, your physical blessings, you have a healthy body, you're mental, you're cultural because you're blessed with a culture, and your spirituality. If you balance those four elements of life, the physical, the mental, the cultural, and spiritual, you can do whatever you want. Old man told me that. I asked him that, that question. But it didn't hit me till many, many years later because all he said was, I asked him, how do you become a Canadian champion? Because he was a Canadian champion, cowboy. And he said, Willie, it's balance. That's all he said, it's balance. But it took me years later to, to understand what, 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 that, what he meant by that. And I think if I had a young, I try to tell all children that when I have a chance to speak, uh, to seek that balance. So there's two pinnacles for me. One was the first time I was athlete of the year in Canada, and then to be in the Hall of Fame for Canada. And in between all that, I'm hoping that I've influenced a lot of young people to do the same thing. Sometimes we tend to focus, in my view, too much on the negative uh, elements of life. And we need to take the same amount of effort because it does take the same amount of effort to be positive. And if we focus on a, on a positive and encourage a positive mental attitude, then we'll have many, many more names and plaques like this of outstanding people.